morning and welcome to church. My name is Lauren and I'm here to tell you all about what's happening this week at River City. If this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome. We're so glad you're here. If you'd like, you can go on our website and click on the I'm new button and fill out a connection card or drop off your card at the info hub right after service. We cannot wait to meet you. Have you missed First Wednesday this summer? We are so ready to get back to the first First Wednesday of the fall semester this week at 7 p.m. Bring your whole family for a time of worship and communion. You can sign up today for Women's Weekend by visiting our website. This is going to be a relaxing time of connection and restoration with other women from our community. All women ages 16 and up can attend. If you need some encouragement, this is for you. Today is First Step Sunday. If you'd like to learn more about our church, this is your first step to becoming a member and finding your place in the kingdom of God. Join us 15 minutes after service in the lobby. Lunch and child care are provided. Join us next week for special guest speaker, Shane Spears. We're excited about a new semester of small groups and Logos Bible study classes. This is where you get connected, make new friendships, and grow in your walk with Jesus. You can sign up online today. Small groups and Logos begin this week. Remember, Logos happen at the church on Tuesday evenings at 7, and small groups happen all over Waco throughout the week. Almost all my life. I think that I was six years old when my parents got back in church. I've been in church uh, at least 73 years. I've found that since the church is growing the way it is, that that is the way to meet new people. And when I was growing up, we didn't have groups. We just had church. But uh, over the years, we've started having groups. And, uh, and since the church is growing the way it is, I don't know a lot of the people. So the best way to meet new people is to get in a small group. That way you're going to know them, they're going to know you, and, you know, you have prayer requests, or they're there for you as you're there for them. I've never been a part of another church. I've been here all my church life. The fellowship, the people there, and when you have a need, and we all have needs, there's somebody there that cares enough about you to pray for you when you have a need. And uh, I've learned to love people that I didn't even know, and they love me back. That makes you feel special. I believe probably it was the first day that we walked into that life group. The people there, uh, the leaders over it, were very warm, very loving, and very inviting. And, and we start with prayer, we end with prayer, and the anointing of God was in every meeting that we had. And so from that point on, it was like, this is my group. I believe that being a part of a group can be critical 
to your salvation because you have the fellowship, you get involved and people know you, they love you, they're going to be there for you when you have situations arise in your life that are not good. So everyone should be involved because if you're not a part of something, you're going to walk out. Being a part of a small group will help you to grow spiritually. And you, because we all need each other, and the scripture says, or iron sharpeneth iron. So if you have each other, you're growing together. You're not only growing for yourself, you're helping those in the group that are new, maybe, that are babies to grow. And if I can be a blessing or a help to someone else and help them grow, that's exactly what I need to do. You can stay connected with us by following us on all of our social media pages or checking out our website. Now, if we could all stand to our feet and give God a hand clap of praise. And glory today for everything you're doing, God, for protecting our family. Come on, give him praise. Let's have a praise break. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him according to his mighty acts. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So let's give him a good praise from our lungs. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. Boy, I, just for a moment there. Chris was interviewing Sister Baker, and I had a flashback. Had a, a, a 1982 flashback when I went to church. Wish she had had small groups because I needed one. I was walking in a difficult time of my life. I, I had no, didn't, didn't even begin to know what a purpose was. Purpose. You know, to be honest, people, and maybe you today, maybe you're, you said, purpose? Well, I don't even have a purpose. I don't know what my purpose is. Why am I, why am I on this earth? And, and I came to the realization that uh, after a little while, because I'd had an experience before I ever came to church, had a God experience where the Lord at 14 years old told me I was going to be a preacher. And I was the furthest thing from being a preacher. It's probably one of the worst teenagers. Uh, you most definitely didn't want me coming around. If you had a daughter, you didn't want me to come around your house. I'm just to be honest. Be honest about it. And now, I, you know, if you want your daughter protected, send her over my house. Send her over the Nelson's house, Bubba. She won't even get off the front porch. So get off that grass, get it back in this house. You don't know who's out there. It's, a, it's an unsafe world. But uh, to find my purpose, I, I knew I had purpose, but I'd never found it. And when, to find my purpose and what God has done in my life, and sometimes at the end, kind of beginning of the end of our lives, we begin to look back and we say, well, and we don't give ourselves any credit and we, we don't, you know, pat ourselves on the back. And maybe we should. Matter of fact, we should. Because, you know, a lot of people, they don't know what you've done. They don't know Bible studies you've taught. They don't know about people you've witnessed to. Because, amen, and, and you know, about reach. What is my purpose in this last day? To reach the lost. No matter the cost. You know, at the funeral a couple of weeks ago, Brother Philip, somebody played that song, um, what was that song, that guy? Give to the Lord. I never heard anybody sing it or play it and sing it. I've just always heard somebody play the, the, what? And so, man, that so touched me when they were singing that. And uh, I still can't hear nothing. So, y'all understand that one day, too. Am I telling you the truth? Come on, anybody here? Anybody here, you know, has anybody here ever have a senior moment? 
That's right when you're in the middle of telling something and you forgot what you said, forgot what you were talking about. But we were talking about purpose. And, and to find your purpose and fulfill your purpose, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to make you a very happy person. Very happy person. So uh, I want to talk to you, though, what, what day and, and what hour, you know, and my purpose Amen. That fourth cup, dealing, you know, dealing with our purpose as a church is to reach the lost. Yes. Listen to what Matthew chapter 24 verse 3 says. And we're going to be using the NIV today, so please bear with me. Amen. I see those words backwards. If I see, if it says NIV Bible, I automatically just open the back up and start reading towards the front. Because I see, it's, if I hadn't learned it, you know, uh, I... I I know a lot of these scriptures by heart, and, and then when you start reading them in IV and they change a few words, which didn't change the meaning most of the time, it really messes a guy like me up because, see, I was one of, I was one of those students. I was that guy who sat behind you. You girls, y'all right, might identify. I would sit behind and say, hey, hey, Susie, just lean over a little bit more. Let me see what number seven said. That way I didn't have to do A, B, 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 A, C, D, D you know. And I've made 60 on, a, on one one time. I just went down there through their marking on them. Amen. I wasn't your best student otherwise. I could read, but I, I, had to, I really learned to read. Read good is when I got in church and I, I, I read the Bible and I couldn't hardly read the Bible because I just couldn't make out all those words. I knew something about phonics. But my father-in-law, he, he turned me on to these set of books called, and uh, this guy, Lemur, Louis Lemur, if you know who he is. There, I stopped reading his books. I think he wrote over 100 books. I mean, just stories about the old West. It's kind of like Zane Gray. And, and man, I learned how to read because I was reading something I was really interested in. And so if you're struggling reading, you're trying to read the Bible, can't find your way through the Bible reading it uh, that way, just get you a book and start, find something easy like Dick, Jane, Spot, and Sally. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all don't know about Dick, Jane? Did y'all know about Dick and Jane and Spot and Sally? That's a whole class. Man, they were it. Amen. That's who we, that's the characters we had when we were in school. But from Matthew chapter 24, this is always the question. When is Jesus coming? When is he coming for his church? And uh, I would like to say very soon. Matthew 24 and verse 3 says, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, tell, and they said, Tell us, they said, when shall, when shall this happen, and what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? We want to know the sign of your coming and the end of age. Now, we find out real quick. I know there's people that all they study, get in church, all they study, when's the Jesus coming? When's the Lord coming? When's the Lord coming? It's like they have two lives. They have this life outside the church, you know, that, that they live, and then they come every Sunday and tell me how much closer we are because, you know, there's some things I did this week that I might not want to do this next week if you think he's coming this next week because I need to get that out of, let me tell you something. If there's in your, something in your life that you need to get out, you don't need to wait until you see Jesus walking way down the high. You need to start before he ever splits the sky. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. So, uh, what's going to be the end of the age? What's going to be what's going to be the sign of His coming? If you'll just let me know. Well, let me tell you something. In in in, the, in this setting of Scripture, go home read uh, Matthew chapter twenty four. It talks about the coming uh, of the Lord. It said there's going to be you know war. Or there's going to be rumors of war. There's going to be all kinds of things happening and uh, rumors of war, pestilence. There's going to be all, and you know what? I look around the world that we live in today, and it's all happening. Everything that, that the Lord 
uh, talked about in, the, in his coming in Matthew chapter 24. Talks, uh, that It sounds to me like that we're living in that hour, that day, in that age. Amen. I do believe that. I got in church in 1982, so I've actually been in church 41 years now. Or, yeah, 41 years. Sometimes give yourself a pat on the back, amen. Sister Baker, 72 years in this church, give yourself a pat on the back. Hug her neck and tell her you love her. And hug Henry especially. Because he just needs a good hug. And they raised a son at this church, Gary Baker. Throw your hand up, Gary. Amen. That is an awesome guy they raised. Came here 23 years ago, and when I looked at Gary and Sherry, I knew she was very stable. But Gary, uh, he'd been raised so much around the church house, I mean, right across the street. Nobody could pull in the parking lot without them having to come over here and check who it was. And so he lived that close to the church, and he went to school here at the church because of Robinson Christian Academy. And you don't want you want to know what Robinson Christian Academy is? Sister Baker, stand up. Stand up, Sister Baker. Come on, stand up. That's Robinson Christian Academy right there. Uh, amen. That's a great education that she gave a lot of young kids. Amen. And matter of fact, we may have to go back to that. Because I don't know if they're educating our kids or not. Amen. What did you learn today? Don't ask them that. <laughs> but in Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, it says... Because of the increase of the wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. This is how you're going to know. Uh, in wickedness is going to increase. Is wickedness increasing? You know, uh, this is, I guess, the second week of high school football was this week. I'm two weeks behind because I thought this week was week zero. And I need to catch up. Now we're already going to the third week in, in high school football. But why am I bringing this up? It's because there was a shooting at a high, Texas high school football game. I mean, that's a no-no. And coming to church and, and shooting and going to kill some, amen, that's a no-no. We can't be doing those kinds of things. Amen. So wickedness will increase in these last days, he says, the love of most will grow cold, but who stands firm to the end will be saved. If you stand firm, don't give up. Don't. How do you make it to heaven? You, never, you put one foot in front of the other in living for God. What do you mean? Today I'm going to pray. Today I'm going to pray. Today I'm going to pray. Lord, I'm going to walk for you today. I'm going to take another step for you today. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to do everything I can. I mean, that's where we should be in this hour because wickedness is increasing and the love of most will grow cold. There are people that are growing cold in their love. They, they don't have love for the house of God anymore because, you know, they got in, they were on fire for God. Do you remember those days? I, that was me. Amen. I stayed on fire a long time and I've been trying to do everything I can to keep the fire burning. Amen. Because I want my fire to be burning when Jesus comes for his church. And he says, the love of most will grow cold, but when, when he who stands firm to the end will be saved, and, these, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Do you hear me? And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all all nations. Now listen, there are 17,000 different dialects in the world. There's set. Did you hear me? Amen. I said there's 17,000 different dialects of people. And we're all, well, there's those people over there. We, we're going to blame it on them. We, gonna, we don't like them. We're going to blame it. Or we're going to. Let's put it on this person. Let's put it on. Let's, let's blame it on. That's the world we live in. We live in a world that's full of blame game. And, and, and everybody else is wrong, and I'm always right. Well, that's what we fostered for years. You know how we fostered that? I'll show you how we fostered that. 
Oh, baby, we've lost the ninth game of the year. We just got one more. But you're going to get a trophy. <laughs> Honey, when I played ball, you didn't get a trophy unless you made the all-star team. And I got some of them trophies. Everybody on the team, maybe two or three people on the team made the all-star team, and nobody else on the team did. Well, see, we're raising a bu- you've raised a bunch of all-stars now that you can't even live with. Because they'll walk up in your house and they think nothing of cussing you to your face. Amen. We need, we, I'm going to tell you something, we need a last day revival. We need one of those revivals that Jesus is coming. Did you hear me that Jesus is coming for his church? Then he said, so when you see this standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Let the reader understand. There's 17,000. We're going to get this to everybody. You know, there is a country over there off of the uh, country of India to where there's a little bitty island and there's a group of people that lives on the island. If, you, if you're not one of them, don't go. Because you will be the main entree for today. So one guy, he decided he would send them some food. Amen. And he, he kept sending them some food. And, hey, I'm sending you the food. Then he sent some food one day and go, went over there. And then and he didn't go back. Because the food they wanted was him. I mean, that, that, you know, that's the world we live in. How are you going to preach the gospel to those people? And before Jesus comes, the gospel will go into the entire wor- world. So there's 17,000 different ethnic groups. Now, explain that. In Louis- this is Louisiana, South Louisiana. You go to Thibodeau, Louisiana, where my, one of my best friends, right in Malone's song. And he, if he come to preach for us, we'd have to have an interpreter. He speaks French, but he speaks English. You need to, you need, you can probably interpret more if he speaks his French than he does if he speaks English. I mean, but, but man, what the work of God that that the Lord has done in that place, and God is is doing the work, Amen. In this place, he he's moving on us, and I I. I, I, I I done lost my place, so help me a little bit here. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm having a senior moment right now. I'll remember it here in a minute what Brother Malone's song said, and I'll come back and tell you. So, uh, but the book of Revelation, uh, chapter, uh, book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 24, 70 and 7s uh, are decreed for your people and your holy city, to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up visions and prophecies and anoint the Most High. Know and understand this. From issuing of the decree to store and to rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and seven uh, and sixty. Two sevens. Let me tell you, what are you talking about, seven? We're talking about the 70 weeks of Daniel. Has anybody ever studied the 70 weeks of Daniel? If you know anything about uh, the book of Revelation, uh, Daniel and Revelation, they go together. Amen? They were, they were written somewhat of the same sort, talking about the same thing. And it's to restore uh, and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes. And there will be seven, seven, sixty-two sevens. It will will be rebuilt with the streets and the trench and the trench and the times of trouble. But in the times of trouble, after sixty-two sevens, the anointed one will, will be cut off and will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War continue until the end and desolation have been declared. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offerings and a wing of, 
and on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So what are you talking about here? The, the uh, Antichrist, what he's going to do, he's going to be in Jerusalem, and he's going to walk into Jerusalem. Amen. They're going to be worshiping their God. Amen. They're going to set up. They're going to be sacrificing again. They're going to be, uh, there'll be that brazen altar, brazen labor. And, and the holiest of holies where the Ark of the Covenant is going to be. And what's going to happen is the Israelites are going to be there. Jerusalem is going to be there. The Jews are going to be there worshiping God. And the Antichrist is going to walk in. And he's going to declare that he is the Christ. I am the one that you should be worshiping. Amen? And listen to how they know uh, or they look at it and they're deceived because of an act. They're, they're deceived because they know that for him to be the Antichrist, what's going to happen to him, what's going to happen with him, and, and the Antichrist should know that you can't touch the Ark of the Covenant because in the Old Testament, if you touch the Ark of the Covenant, that would be a presence from God would kill you. They were moving the uh, ark back to the city of David. Amen. At one time, David was. And a guy by the name of Yusa, they built a new cart. Amen. They thought they were going to do it their way. Do you hear me? They were going to do it their way. So they said, let's build. Let's don't look in the Word and see how they, they toted it. Amen. The Levite, Levigo priesthood. So he said, we'll build a new cart. And we'll put it on a new cart, an oxen, maybe that's never plowed before. I mean, it's going to be so pure. The wood's going to be pure. The oxen's going to be pure. Everything's going to be pure. But all of a sudden, they hit a place in the road, amen, and evidently they didn't have straps and chains and a come along to buckle that thing down real good or a binder. And, and that, that ark rocked a little bit, and Yusa reached out because Yusa, he worked in the temple himself, so he reached out to steady the Ark of the Covenant. He reached out, in essence, to steady the presence of God. And when he touched the Ark of the Covenant, he fell dead. And let me tell you something. David said, stop right here. We're not going any further. He said, first of all, we got to find a place to put this thing. Because we got to go back to the city, we got to go back to Jerusalem, and we got to find out how God wants us to. You can't just do this any old way. You have to do this according to the Word of God. And it cannot be taken out of context. You got to find the right context and keep it in its context to understand the Word of God. Amen. Man, that, and, and, but watch what happens when the present God, presence of God, they find a man by the name of Obed, and they were in Eden. So they called him Obed Eden. Amen. And Obed Edom said, I'll tell you what, I have a place you can keep that thing while you go back to Jerusalem and find out how to move it. And so David, they made the deal. He went over there. This East Texas deal here, you know, made the deal. He, he, uh, he, he, he said, okay, we're going to let you open eat them. You're going to be taking care of the Ark of the Covenant. We're going to find out how to move it. And guess what happened to his house while he had the Ark of the Covenant there? Let me tell you something. Ever, when his cows started giving birth to calves, you know, cows usually have only one calf. They all were having twins. And all of the mules, or not mules, they don't have young, but the donkeys and the horses and everything else, when they had, they had twins. They, and even their wives, some of them got pregnant. Man, they had twins. Why? Because of the blessings of God that that presence of God brought on that family. And we're not even talking about giving right now. What God wants most is you. Did you hear me? What you, he wants you. And when he gets you, he's going to have everything you have. Amen. Do you hear me? When we serve him, uh, that we're going to serve him. We're going to be his. We're going to submit ourselves to him. How much do we submit ourselves to him? When I get to the... 
to the edge of the Word of God. Do I stop there or do I take a step outside of the Word and go my way? Most of us step outside of the Word and do whatever we want to do. And by Sunday, we try to get back to where we really need to be. Why don't we just stay living for God? Why don't we just do things right and see what God will do in our lives? That's my purpose, to reach lost people. And so what's going to happen is, uh, is that Antichrist is going to walk right into the temple and he's going to walk right up. Let's let that be the Ark of the Covenant today. Amen. Hope I don't bust my mm -hmm. And he walks right up and they go, oh my God, he's not about to do that. He's going to sit on the Ark of the Covenant. Does he not know what that, that will kill him? That's Old Testament. We're in the New Testament now. That, that, that's been fulfilled. That is no more. Amen? And there's a whole lesson in that. But he, he looks back. He sits on the Ark of the Covenant. No presence of God. No power kills him. Nothing happens. And so he must, then all the people said, Oh, God, he didn't die, so he must be the Christ. See how easily, see how easily you can get off off the, off the main line. He says, well, I'll just go ahead and believe. You know, the Bible says if the blind follow the blind, they both going to fall in the ditch. So I want to know what, amen, somebody's going to teach me, somebody's going to preach to me. I want to know what thus saith the Word says. I don't care about somebody's opinion. I want to know what the Word of God says. And, and uh, man, Jesus is coming. And the state of that Antichrist, oh, man. You know, when you look at the 70 weeks of Daniel, it wasn't just 70 weeks. It was 434 years, 483 years of the 490 years were fulfilled. And there's only seven years in that period of time back in those days, which was never fulfilled. There's seven Days, basically, is what it said. Or seven years. A day is a year, and a year is a, a day is a year, and a year is a day. A thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years with the Lord. Amen. So time is no problem with God. And then we're, we're, we're always looking and say, come on, somebody let me know what time it is. Why do you want to know what time it is? So you can be where you're supposed to be on time. Does somebody have to ask you when you're out doing things you shouldn't do? Are you down? Are you, are you doing the right thing? Well, I just hope that nobody would see me. Oh, watch out now. Be sure your sins will find you out when you do things in darkness. Amen. One day, if you don't repent of it, it's going to be shouted out. Amen. From the. Everybody's going to know about it. I'm going to be embarrassed when everybody finds out what I really am. That's why I like that song, Can You See the Real Me? Can you? Can you? Y'all don't remember that song? Can you see the real me? Can you? Can you? Or do you, are you really seeing me? You know who you should see when you see me? You should see Jesus. Amen. You said you should see Jesus. Oh, well, I better watch out. I'll get in trouble. I'm not, I'm not going to go in that area. So I was going to chase a rabbit, but I'm not going to chase that rabbit today because, oh, man, I'm still doing good on time. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a light can clap of praise. So I said there's, there's seven years. There's seven years still left. And the book of Revelation, we're fixing to touch this right now. In Revelation uh, 2 through, and 3, we're going to talk about this. That uh, man, Jesus is coming for, he's coming for a bride or a date. What's the difference between a bride and a date? One's fully committed and the other's just thinking about it. Well, are we the bride of Christ or are we just a date? Think about that now. Think about that. Yeah, I like that. So instead of saying something real smart, I'm just going to say that this. 
Where's that going to get you? Confused. Oh, man, when I look at this. The church age, the book of Revelation 2 and 3, it talks about the seven churches uh, of Asia. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to try to name them all. Philadelphia, Laodicea, Pergama or Pergia. I'm not going to try to name them all because I will mispronounce some of them. But they are, they're talking about churches that either are left uh, actually in this day. There are churches that are just like these seven churches. And you say, well, if we're like one of those, we must be doing real good. No, because uh, quite a few of them were rebuked. They were rebuked for being backslidden. Amen. Just like in the book of Galatians, I, I like what uh, Paul wrote there. He said, O oh, Galatians, O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? O oh, foolish Galatians, who has played a witchcraft on you and told you, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has told you that we begun in the Spirit and now we made perfect by the flesh? What's flesh? Education. Man's ideals. Man's ideals. Not God's ideals. See, God's way is totally different from man. A lot of people don't get that. And you know what? Oh, I'm not going to say that. No, I'm not going to say that. Amen. The church age, Revelations 2 and 3. And that last church, which is Laodicea, matter of fact, I've heard it kind of this way, that Philadelphia and the church of Laodicea will be uh, the types of churches we see as when the Lord comes for his church. What do you mean the church of Laodicea? It was a church that was lukewarm. I don't matter. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, too, don't let anybody tell you this. Well, too much church to get you all messed up. Yeah, to get you saved. Yeah, yeah, woo, hallelujah. It'll get you saved. Now, the Andy, the preaching I did to you 20 years, preached to you and talked to you. Amen, there was no, ho no holds barred. Did you know that? That I hit you with every bar I could hit you of the Bible. And when I got through with him, he still wasn't there yet. And so we went on about another 10-week spree. And about halfway through that, Andy said, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Now I understand. I understand the keys of the Word of God. Because you cannot unlock the, key, unlock the Word of God without the keys. And who were those keys given to? They were given to Peter. And he said, Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so Peter whatever you preach I'm going to stand behind you I'm going to stand right behind you Peter amen because if you preach something amen that, that, that I don't I'm going to stop you amen so Peter he had the keys to what the kingdom of God amen there are another set of key, keys in the kingdom amen uh, it's the keys of death hell and the grave and when Jesus died on the cross, he said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on down there. And I'm going to take the keys away. I'm going to take the devil. I'm going to take the devil's keys away. He ain't going to have keys to his front lawn anymore because I have the keys of death hell and the grave and Jesus said I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly amen and we're ah. and then in, 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 uh, in Revelation chapter 4 give me 1 and 2 in King James okay yeah we're there Revelation, uh, Revelations uh, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and a voice which I heard was as a, it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which uh, must be hereafter. Now hold it right there. 
I'm going to show you things. Come up here. Come up with me. Now, many preachers and a lot agree that when he says come up hither, he's basically, he's bringing uh, John the Revelator and he's allowing him to see the last of days. And he said, come up hither. And then you don't read anything about the about the present day church until you get past Revelation chapter 19. But watch this. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first which I heard was, as it were, a multitude talking with me which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set uh, uh, and, and a throne, what? And a, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat upon that throne. Who's going to be on the throne? Who's Jesus? He's God manifest in the flesh. He's the only, he's the only part of God that we've ever seen. It's the flesh of Jesus. We call him the Son of God because the Holy Ghost, amen, if you look at that, the Father's not even the Father of Jesus, amen, but the Holy Ghost is the Father of Jesus. Because that which was conceived, Mary, uh, she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost and conceived of the Holy Ghost. Amen, I'm just saying there's one God. His name is Jesus. He's the Father in creation, the Son in redemption, and the Holy Spirit in regeneration. Do you hear me now? Do you understand me now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And go home and read Revelation chapter 1. said he had eyes like fire and his, 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 the hair on his head was white as snow. For he's had a transformation. And we have to be transformed. We have to be transformed. And that's, listen, he says, come up here. I'm going to show you. And so that is a type of him taking the church out of this world. So a lot of people believe that this would be where the Lord would say, I'm bringing the church. I'm rapturing the church, which the word rapture is not a biblical word, but it comes from a Greek word. And I'm not going to get in trouble if I try to pronounce all that. And so it takes us to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 6 through 19. And this morning Jolene said, Brother Nelson, are you going to read all 13 chapters of the book of Revelation? I said, well, Jolene, I think for time's sake I won't. (laughs) But it talks about, amen, it talks about, matter of fact, even Revelation chapter 6. And then you get down to about verse, uh, Revelation chapter 13. It talks about the Antichrist. It talks about uh, a great whore that set up on many waters. And you have to understand typology or you will not understand any of the book of Revelation. You will get nothing but confused out of the book of Revelation if you, if you do it that way. Amen? So then we get, then we, we, so we go through. And matter of fact, that's where he's admonishing the church to live for God. Come on, live for God. You got to watch for these things. If you, you know, if, if you go deer hunting, you know what a deer looks like. You just, you just don't go, you know, the game warden comes up and says, son, you just killed the neighbor's dog. So I thought it was a deer. That ain't a deer. Have you ever seen a deer? No, sir, I've never seen a deer. I didn't know what one looked like, so I shot that thing. Man, we got to know what we look like. We got to know who we are. You got to know who you are. Do you know who you are? Woo, hallelujah. Then that gives you purpose. And the rise of the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 6. And then when we get down to Revelation chapter 19, the second coming of Christ. Amen. Let me tell you something. I say this all the time. Jesus is not coming for a, uh, he's not coming for a date. He's coming for a bride. Yeah. A date, she just gets herself all dolled up. Now, us guys, I remember when I used to, uh, when I first started dating, my brother still lived at home, hadn't got married yet, and I knew where the good stuff was. He had some good stuff up in the top of the cabinet. Amen. He kept it in the box. He bought it in, and it was there, and it stuff stuck away to where he thought I didn't see it. What made him mad is he went to school one day, 
some of the girls said, Jackie Nichols, she said, Bill, I smelt that on Robert when he was at the house the other day. Her, her, her brother was my best friend. So my brother, he found out I'd been in his brute. Come on, baby. Back in 72, brute was it. You either got English leather, you got brute or British sterling. Or if you really wanted to be cheap, get some high karate. You know, he, 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 so when I would be getting ready for a date, man, it must have took me an hour or two to get ready because I'd press them jeans. My mama didn't press my jeans. My mama was sick while she was alive. We still pressed our own clothes. She couldn't, she was bedridden. So I got it, man, I pressed them britches. I pressed that shirt. Get every wrinkle out. Man, it's got to be done a certain way. It's got to look so good. Amen. Why? Because I've, ne- I- I- I've got a date. I've got one on the hook. Brother Ken, look out, baby. Pull the mouth off of that. Trying to get them in the boat. Amen. So that's what it, it entails. Hey, you, know, you know what I'm talking about, Austin. My nephew's over there this morning. You know what we're talking about, how you get all dolled up and got that perfect, got that right and got your vehicle. You even made sure your car was clean. Am I right telling you the truth? Even whether it needed a washing, if you had a date on that Saturday night, baby, that thing was going to get washed. The inside was going to be cleaned. It was going to be, it was awesome. Because I was, I was impressing. Now, when someone goes to get married, it's a whole nother level. And you know what, gentlemen, you're going to have to dress up some. And you, you're going to have to stop spending every night with all the boys. You're going to have, okay, we've got to have boys night out. Really? Mm-mm. Going to have girls night out? Okay, go ahead, baby. Go ahead and get the rest of your stuff, too. Because you're going to need it. That sounds, that sounds bad, don't it? But it's true. If we don't live for God, if we think we can just do anything we want to do and God is going to look at us and he's going to say, enter in my good and faithful servant. Faithful servant. Faithful. 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 I, I'm going to tell you this. If we miss heaven, we've missed it all. Very, yeah. Very serious. If we miss heaven. You know, could you just take my word for it? I don't believe, brother. Could you just take the word, my word for it? Because you're not going to like it. If you do it your way, you're not going to like your end result. I like this. Instead of you're not going to like your end result, you're going to be saying, how'd that work for you? Yeah. How'd that work for you? Stop in your husband's super stroke pickup that ain't super stroke that ain't no joke. Got the King Ranch package on it. I like that. Let your wife drive it. She's just going to be nice and fill it up with gas for you. Drove it all over town, shopping, got home that day. Went out, Honey, my, my new pickup ain't. Did, well, you filled it up. What'd you, what kind of diesel? Oh, honey, I just put the stuff I put in mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad, ain't it? It's like, oh, my God. He goes out there and cranks it up and he's sitting there, king, 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 king. Has anybody ever, everybody ever blow the motor like that? Chris, you know you blow the motor before. <laughs> my God, he don't blow motors just accidentally. Andy, 
He blowed the motor in the church van and rods went through the oil pan out on the highway. Amen. And people's got to get around the debris. And he, he calls me and he says, Hey, Daddy, I think the motor's blown up in this van. Oh, I said, oh, we need, you need to let somebody come in your suburban. Oh, let me check the oil first. I said, did you check the oil? He said, no, I didn't check it. He said, I said, son, you got to check the oil in a vehicle you don't drive all the time because you got to know how much is in it because you don't want to run it dry a bowl because it won't work without the oil. Oh, hallelujah. You can't run around, amen, without the anointing because it just doesn't work without the anointing of God. Oh, hallelujah. It takes the anointing of God to do this. It's not because, amen, I've got an education and I learned all this and now I'm going to get up and I'm going to fix everybody. You ain't going to fix nobody. Amen. You just preach the word. Be this and in season, out of season. Reprove, repeat with all long suffering doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's where we're at. Oh, me. Yeah, you're getting it old school today. I'm sorry. Then the book of Revelation, chapter 19, second coming Christ. Then uh, also Revelation 19, we're going to get to celebrate because of the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We all go, we're not going to be sitting there like we shouldn't be there. We're going to have our robes on. Amen. We're going to be ready. Amen. We come to banquet tonight. Amen. We come to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Then we might do some of... We had a marriage, amen. We had a man. What are we going to do when we get to heaven? I'll tell you what we're going to do when we get to heaven. Come on. I'm going to tell you what. We're going to find our brother, and we both going to be doing this. Woo! Hallelujah. Let's back up some. Let's go forward. Hallelujah. Because we've made it. We're going we're gonna to get beside ourselves because I'm in heaven. And the women come later because the Bible says there was 30 minutes of silence. No. Please, Cindy, forgive me. I love you, baby. No, we're going to all be calling together to meet the Lord in the clouds. And the Bible says, and so shall we be with the Lord. And he says, we are to encourage each other with these words. We didn't say discourage. I'm encouraging. Jesus is coming for his church. He's coming for his bride. Marriage Supper of the Lamb, uh, Revelation chapter 20, the millennium, amen, thousand years, this is going to be after, after the thousand year, well, excuse me, after the seven years, it's going to be a thousand year millennial reign, where the lion's going to lay down by the lamb, and the lamb won't have to worry about being eaten, wow, you won't have to worry about that lion chasing you. You don't have to worry about that rattlesnake biting you. Amen. I love that commercial about that guy that's head of the, just a rattlesnake bite. Yeah. Get bit by a rattlesnake, get to the hospital fast. And, and then the millennium, and then the last rebellion, Revelation chapter 20. It says in that thousand year millennial reign, at the very end, there's going to be a short season where the, the enemy, the Lucifer, is going to be set free again in the earth to deceive those who could be deceived. And there will be people deceived. And then the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. After the thousand year blind, right, the great white throne judgment. That's where he's going to bring up those from death, hell, and the grave. And they're going to before God. And they're going to be judged in the great white throne judgment. Do you want me to tell you how to stay out of the 
great white throne judgment is to be born again of the water and the spirit. And we never have to go through that. We go, we'll be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. So when we get caught up in the clouds, that means we really can't be lost. We're there. Amen. That's eternal security right there. We're going to be caught up in the clouds in the day, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, man. And we're going to live and reign with him throughout eternity. How long is eternity? I don't know. I've never lived that long. And when we do, it'll just be beginning. So, eternity, chapter 21 and chapter 22. But I think 21 or 22 it talks about uh, there is a river that flows out of the midst of the throne of God. And that river is a, is a li- river of life. And it flows into this earth. Matter of fact, I believe when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, that river of life flows in us. And it brings life to us. It brings anointing to us. Amen. When we're baptized with His Spirit. And... And the book, until the time of the end, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. At the time of Michael, the great prince, who protected your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until now. But at that time, your people, every one whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Amen. If your name's in the book... You do. As a matter of fact, how you get your name in the book? By obeying those things which are written in the books. Amen. That's Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. We'll be found in the book, we'll be delivered. Multitudes uh, who are asleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will rise like the uh, brightness of the kingdom and those who lead many to righteousness let the stars forever and ever let let let, and like the stars forever and ever but you Daniel keep this prophecy a secret seal it up until the uh, seal uh, until the time of the end when many will rush here and there and knowledge will increase that's the day we live in in the 1940s Knowledge increased like every 20 years, every 25 years. Now they say knowledge increases daily. Knowledge doubles daily. All this artificial intelligence and stuff they're making, which actually they tell me that one day it's going to take over and kill us all. Yeah, that's crazy. Amen. Uh, uh. Uh, if one of them comes, ah, uh, yeah, um, hallelujah. I, I don't know about all that. Artificial intelligence. And, but it's going to be a big play in the last, I believe, the last seven years. Matter of fact, Revelation chapter 13 says there's going to come a time that you're going to get this little etching, this little uh, rice, a uh, little chip put just about the size of a grain of rice. They're going to put it in your forehand here, your right forehand, or just below your hairline on your head because they find it on the hairline in the hand, back of the hand, is the rapid, it's on the body, it's the most rapid change of temperature. That's why when your kid has fever, you put your hand on their head. That's why when you, you're walking, some touch them on the back of the hand, feel their hand if it's hot. I, that's the way my mother used to do it. She could tell if you had fever or not. Amen. And I believe he's coming back for a bride, though, that has made herself ready. And she's ready for him to come for her. I don't know about you, but if you you could leave here today and you knew you were going, if you knew, you knew, you knew, you knew, without a shadow of a debt, would would you go to heaven? Are you ready today? Woo! Oh, my God, is the bus out there? Forget about signing up. I'm getting in line. I don't need to sign up. I need to get in line. I feel like that. We need to get in line. We need to start lining up. But let me tell you something. Before we line up, this is a purpose in our life. We better be trying to reach every loved one we possibly can. Let me tell you something. Let's fill this church up twice on Sundays. Amen. You don't have to come to both services. If you have, we have to, we'll go to three services before we get that new church built. But we need to grow. Did you hear me? We need to reach people. It's about souls. Well, don't you think the church is big enough? No. I think as long as there's somebody alive, 
lost in this world. We got to try to reach them. Daniel chapter 12, it says, I heard what he said, but I did not understand what he meant. So I asked, how will all this finally end, my Lord? But he said, go now, Daniel, for what I have said is kept in a secret and sealed until the time of the end. It's going to be, it's going to be open in the time of the end. Mary, or excuse me, not Mary, many, boy, I'm reading good today. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials But the wicked will continue in their wickedness, and none of them will understand. They lack understanding. And only those who are wise will know what he means. It's going to take an inside revelation that only the Holy Ghost can give you. God, so fill me with the Holy Ghost. So fill me, let me be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 42 says, Therefore, keep watch. You got to keep watch. You constantly have to be keeping watch for what, for, until the end time for Jesus. You know what? We got time to seek Him. We better seek Him. That better be our purpose today, is I'm going to seek God today. When I first got to church, they, they talked to me about receiving the Holy Ghost. I said, Wait a minute, wait a minute, dude. You, you done blow my mind. I don't know nothing about this. Well, you hadn't heard that going to Sunday school. I didn't want to Sunday school very much. Oh, I better be good. I'm going to tell you something. Second week, better get your kids in Sunday school. Because they grow up fast. When they get about 13, they're going to listen to all their friends, and they ain't going to follow you. They're going to follow their friends. Did you hear me? You better get them in church. I don't care how dumb it sounds to them. I don't, I don't care how awkward it is. Amen. I, I, want you to be, I want you to make it to heaven. Well, I know I'm going to heaven. Oh, really, do you? Can you call that shot? Wow. Can we call that shot? I mean, there's only one that got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. That was Jesus. It sounds to me like Jesus is the one that's going to be judging us. Amen. Did you hear me? I said it's going to be Jesus who judges us in the last days. But listen to what Matthew says. We need to, well, first of all, we need to make our mind up. This is not a date. I'm asking you, honey, to get married. Let me tell you something, honey. Something happened to me. But the Lord don't come for June the 2nd, 2024. Think a minute. We're going to repeat our vows. She said, but Robert, won't you do that? Nah, we said them way back 40 years ago. Ain't that enough? No, uh, tell your wife one time you love her. And 15 years later, go by and say, she said, honey, you never tell me you love me. Well, I told you I loved you and I meant it. One time, it's a man, okay, Casanova. <laughs> Amen, girl. My, my granddaughters, I need to have a talk with him. I imagine that daddy's going to pretty much fix that. But listen, last, one of my last scriptures. Therefore, keep watch because you know not what day your Lord will. Will come. If I would have only known, if I'd only known. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, if I'd only known, we'd have been in church a week before. Really? My, listen, listen to what Luke says. Luke says this in Luke chapter 12, verse 35 and verse 36. He, I want you, musicians, come on. I probably need to come fast because I'm about to get through. (laughs) Oh, my God. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Got to keep that wick trimmed. 
when you do turn it off, you've got to keep the wick, 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 tr- uh, the wick trimmed. Like servants waiting for the master to return f- from a wedding banquet. So that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. So when he comes and knocks, you're going to know it's him. You're going to open the door. He's coming for his church. He's coming for his bride. And you're going to be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And the Bible says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Did you hear me? So shall we ever be with the Lord. We're going to be with Jesus. That's my purpose is to help people find their need. What you need to be doing. What God called, what's, what's, what's God, you know, probably God ain't called you to be up here. I've had people say, when are you going to let me preach? I said, I didn't know you was a preacher. Well, yeah, I decided to be one. That ain't something you decide. You better know, you better know it if you're called. Because you'll be like that lady that was following, I believe it was Paul or Peter. They were following Paul. And finally, he followed him around for quite a few days, mocking God and all this kind of stuff. He finally stopped and cast the devil out of her. Amen. If you're not careful, you'll have a whole following of demons. That's the last thing I want. I want somebody to follow me that wants to serve God. I mean, serve God. Amen. My, my, my. Got to have Jesus. The Bible says all Scripture, all Scripture is given for doctrine, reproof, correction, so we can find my purpose. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm, we are, my wife and I, we're kind of in, entering a new age of our era of our life. Kind of, kind of, but not semi-retired. But we're not going to be driving the wagon. We're going to be riding in the wagon with a stagecoach, and I'm going to ride right behind Chris and holler at him the whole time. Come on, Chris! Drive that wagon, son! Drive that wagon. Why? Because we, we're taking people to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. We're going to take people. Do you want to take somebody with you? Yeah. Did you hear me? Do you want to take somebody with you? Do you want to take somebody with you? I got loved ones that don't know anything about this. I got loved ones that know any, don't know anything about this. They thought their purpose was just to lay up treasures in this world. And it's good to have treasures in this world. Don't have a whole lot of them. Amen. Probably my most prized possession is the Bob Cup. He said, I don't know, I've never heard about the Bob Cup. It's a little bitty white cup, ceramic cup, and it's got a, a goose flying, and it's got a pig dressed up in a blue coat, and he's riding, and they put Bob on it. They called me Bob when I was a kid. So Bob got the Bob Cup, and I was so proud of that. And one time I thought, I thought somebody had misplaced it, and I I just almost lost my mind. Well, I'm going to have to, one of these days, I'm going to leave that cup here. We can't take everything. Amen. Everybody be out there, you know, you got 25 minutes. What you doing? If it's to go home and be with the Lord, I'm going to take all this stuff. So when I get there, I got. No, when we get there, we're just going to be able to walk through walls and appear. I'm going to say, hey, Nathan, I'm just thinking. He's going to understand it. He said, I think Brother Nelson's fixing to walk up. Hey, man, how you doing? How? Oh, man, Juniper, ain't she beautiful? Man, we going to, I'm going to, we got so many beautiful kids around here. Hey, Amen. Let's give, let's give the children a hand clap today. And that's the cup of praise. I know you're probably wondering, where does that fall into four cups, Chris? Exodus 6. I'm going to read this to you one more time. And it's our vision for your life. I believe that you can have a little heaven on earth. Matter of fact, the Word told us that. It's an earnest. Come on now. It's an earnest of our inheritance. What is the earnest of our inheritance? 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can have a little bit of heaven. There's times where all hell's breaking loose. And what do I do? I go get in the Spirit for a minute. Why? Because, God, I need a little heaven right now in this situation. Well, Chris, what is, what is Daniel? What is all that stuff? Because one day when he returns, we're going to drink that final fourth cup. We're going to be all together in heaven. And let me tell you something. When we raise the fourth cup one more time, this time it's going to be on the other side of glory. It's going to be for eternity. And it's going to be the cup of praise. Because my God, I made it. What does that have to do with today? Well, you can have a little bit of that today. Exodus, this whole series has been on this. Exodus chapter 6. He says, therefore, say to the Israelites, I'm the Lord. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves. What are that? That is the cup of sanctification where we come out from under. And then I'm going to free you. That's the cup of deliverance. And then he goes on. He says, and I will redeem you. In other words, I'm going to reach out with an outstretched hand. Man, we serve a God this morning. He's not looking at me saying, get yourself together and come to me. He's reaching out saying, no, come to me right now. I'll get it together with you. And he goes on and he says this. He says, with outstretched hands and with mighty acts of judgment. And then he says, I will take you, bam, as my own people. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God then. Look at your neighbor and say, then. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. Chris, what is all this about? This is why we do. This is our whole point of know Jesus, find community, get equipped, and today live on mission. Live on mission. Why? Because I'm on mission. I'm on mission. And when you get baptized in the, in the, under the power of the Holy Ghost, what it cranks something up, it turns, that's that key that turns something on. And there's so many people you're searching for. Well, what, what's the next step for me this morning, Chris? What, where do I go next? Let me tell you something this morning. You ought to lift your hands to heaven and say, God, I'm asking you to baptize me in your spirit with evidence of speaking with other tongues. God, I'm asking you to feel me. And I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to tell you something. I feel like real Christianity is just a little bit too crazy for a lot of fake Christianity today. The biblical Christians, these people in the Bible, they were crazy people that were so crazy that in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost was poured out on them they poured out into the streets speaking in tongues and when they did even Jews came around and said these people are drunk and Peter Peter the one with the keys to the kingdom the one called the rock the one who it is said I'll build my church on him and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it Peter stands up that day when he's asked when they say he's drunk, he says, these are not drunk as you suppose. He said, but this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Let me tell you something. God's got a plan for your life. And it's got to graduate on to the next place because he's coming. Pastor preached about it today. He's coming. Hey, Jesus is coming. I don't know if y'all have heard. Jesus is coming. Someone look at your neighbor and tell him, Jesus is coming. Hey, Jesus, come on, somebody stand up. Nudge your neighbor and say, hey, Jesus is coming. Nudge him, Jesus is coming. Come on, nudge the person next to you. Jesus is coming.